My name is Gavin Evans and this is my ranking of James Gunn's directed movies from worst to best. And James Gunn isn't just one of the best superhero directors now, he's one of the best movie directors working nowadays, period. The guy is a complete talent in every regard. I do have some issues with some of his scripts, but his directing is always on point. The visuals are stunning, he's willing to be as weird as possible, he's great when it comes to characters, he has a signature type of humor, and he mostly delivers on inventive action sequences. So I really do like him as a director, so let's get talking about his movies with his worst one. And his worst movie is Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, unfortunately. I was very excited for this movie, and I still enjoyed it overall. I have to be clear on that. I do like this movie. I think the cast really delivers, especially Chris Pratt. The guy is such a great charismatic actor. I think visually this movie is stunning with some incredible makeup and production design. And I love lots of what this movie is trying to do, to do about telling a story of creators and their creation and the relationship between the two. I like how he's trying to tell a story about embracing imperfections and about just he's trying to tackle so many heavy ideas and I appreciate the attempt but just putting everything together it doesn't feel as cohesive as it should be. I don't think it leans enough into these ideas. Like everything with Rocket's backstory I really do like but it also feels completely unneeded. And having the decision to have Rocket be knocked out for majority of this movie was a terrible one. He should have been the main guy. Or if his life was in danger, then I feel like he should have been kidnapped. But just to have him be absent for so much of this movie that is meant to be his, I thought was a terrible mistake. And then we've got everything with Peter and Gamora, which I do love. You feel the weight of Peter's Gamora's death and how that affects him, and how he has to learn that this new Gamora isn't her, and embraces her for who she is. I love all of that, but it just doesn't tie in enough to what's happening. I don't even know why Gamora is in this movie. She's with the Ravagers, and then she decides to help her sister out, and then she's just like, ah, I don't want to be here. I should be off. And then she tries to get away, but then she doesn't. And her inclusion in this movie felt very forced. So because of that, it didn't really connect with the main themes in the main story of the movie. And I, it's just, I, I just think it's a very messy written story. And as much as I love lots of the song choices, the actual utilization of them is just abysmal. Like, truly. I, when San Francisco turns out to be playing only when Gamora is flying a vehicle, I was just like, really? Like, what a waste. You got crazy for you that plays for five seconds as Adam Warlock is flying. And I'm like... Why would you have this great song and not use it? it? It, Like, if you're going to use these songs, then use them. If not, then just leave them out entirely. It feels like he was obligated to at this point. And Adam Warlock did not need to be in this movie at all. I also thought this movie was way too long. It really started to drag for me by the last act. And I really hate the ending. Uh, the fact that nobody dies actually pissed me off. Because it, it was seen as the conclusion for the Guardians of the Galaxy. And it's just lacking that weight. By the end, it felt like another Saturday morning cartoon with the Guardians of the Galaxy. It doesn't feel important. It feels like filler. 
And then at the end, they all decide to just split up for the sake of it, pretty much. Mantis, all of a sudden, out of the blue, is like, I need to discover myself. And then rides off for so sweet battery eating monsters and I'm like really and I, I don't know it for a movie that it just should have felt like a conclusion of sorts and it just didn't it lacked that weight that I feel like was essential to it um a few more things um the humor is funny it's a bit predictable in this movie but and it didn't make me laugh out really loud but I still enjoyed it I love the scene when uh, the bad guy? What's his name again? Is it like High Evolutionary? That sounds right. Anyways, when they peel his face off, I loved that a lot. That was awesome. Um, I loved everything with Nathan Fillion's character and those people in these giant wheeled suits and how this space station is made of flesh. That was really great. I loved when you see the animals become like these human-like beings. It kind of reminded me of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, which I just watched for the first time. Um, yeah, I thought that was great. And there is heart, but uh, there's lots in this movie that I really do love, but I just think it's a bit of a bloated mess. And every time they cut to Rocket's walk, backstory, it just killed the pacing of this movie. I don't know why they did it like that. I really don't. Uh, but then we get to my fifth favorite James Gunn movie, and it's Super. This is such a unique movie. Because instead of being like every other superhero movie, it's portraying the hero like the psychopath that he is. And viewing it through that lens, I think it's a very interesting character study of what could drive a man to want to dress up in a suit and beat people up. And then you've got Ellen's Page character and I think she's absolutely incredible in this movie. And then it's got this dark sense of humor like this one scene when he beats this guy up because he cut in line but he convinced himself he's in the white. Uh, it really does deliver on the brutality. I, I wouldn't say it's great. I got some issues with the screenplay. Some of the artsy choices really didn't work for me, but I really like so much what this movie's trying to do and how it's trying to subvert your expectations when it comes to superhero movies. So, yes, I still like this movie quite a bit. My fourth favorite James Gunn movie is The Suicide Squad. Now, I just rewatched this movie again, and I really like it. But the first two acts are heavily flawed. The jokes don't always land for me. Everything with Polka Dot Man and his mom. Eh. John Cena's jokes about dicks on the beach aren't really funny at all. And everything with Holly Quinn is just completely unneeded. Like, the first half of this movie just is entertaining, but... It's flawed. But the second half of this movie, it really comes alive. Everything with the structure and how you don't know what's going on with the other bunch of characters, I thought that was really great. I love the whole like vibes with Sterile and how we see th these people just walking around like brainless zombies. I loved that. I thought the fight between Peacemaker and Rick Flagg was really great. I loved it when they all decided to do the right thing and Amanda Waller almost killed them. That had me on edge. And everything about the climax of this movie is absolutely beautiful. You know, there's that one line. Why rat, Papa? Well, rats are the most despised and lowliest of creatures. If they have purpose, then there's hope for us all. And it just ties together everything that's in this movie in such an emotionally overwhelming way. The score by John Murphy in this last bit is phenomenal. It just sounds unique and adds a sense of real emotion behind it. And when uh, Bloodsport's daughter sees him on the TV and says, that's my dad. Like for the first time, she has a positive father figure. And I love that. And um, James Gunn really does direct the hell out of this movie. Visually stunning. And um, 
yeah, I, like, I really like this movie. It's flawed, no doubt, but it really sticks the landing. My third favorite James Gunn directed movie is Guardians of the Galaxy. He took a bunch of nobody characters that not a single person knew about. And he made them instant fan favorites. Star-Lord, Gamora, Groot, Rocket Raccoon, Drax the Destroyer, Nebula. And he just brings them to life so perfectly. And the cast just delivers in every possible way. Chris Pratt, fantastic. Uh, Zoe Sedana, also really great. Dave Bautista, great comedic performance. Bradley Cooper, great. Vin Diesel, honestly, some of his best work. And these characters just feel alive. They have so much personality and just their interactions and their conflict, it all felt really real. And then you've got the soundtrack from the moment this movie begins. Well, not the moment the movie begins, but when the movie begins and Peter Creel is walking and then he starts dancing and Come and Get Your Love is playing and the title appears in giant letters, I just knew right there and then that I was watching something special. And then you got like Hooked on the Feeling, Ain't No Mountain High Enough, um, Ooh, Child, that song by the five starships. I do know what song it is. So, and then the visuals are really great. I love how it's like James Gunn's version of Star Wars. And then you've also got some real emotion. You know, the Take My Hand, Peter, has real emotional weight behind it. And then you've got this reveal at the end that Peter calls himself Star Lord because that's what his mom called him. And it just adds a whole new layer to the character. And yeah, like I, I just can't believe how good this first movie is. It just fully delivers. It's hilarious. The humor almost always lands. The action is great. The characters are great. It's incredibly well directed. How can you not have a blast watching it? My second favorite James Gunn movie is Slither. This movie... I love, and it deserves way more credit. Now, if you asked me, Gavin, you can bring back any genre of movie. Which genre do you bring back? And the easy answer is 80s body horror with practical effects. I love The Fly. I love The Blob. I love the Nightmare on Elm Street movies. Well, some of them. I love Hellraiser. I love Reanimator. I love Society, I love Brain Dead. I just love these movies that are so weird and gross and sickening and filled with some of the most amazing practical effects you've ever seen. And we just don't get many movies like that nowadays. We got Color Out of Space in 2020. And there might be a couple others I'm missing, but it doesn't happen often and Yes, this movie came out in 2006, but still one of the newest movies in that very specific subgenre. And it's just a movie made for me. I love just how gross and disgusting this movie is. You got these little worm like parasites that control people's brains, and you've got yourself some really sickening moments as you watch Michael Ruko transform into this hideous creature. And at the end when he's like that giant blob and all these humans are coming into him and just he's getting bigger and bigger. Love it. Like looks truly terrific. I also love it when you see that one lady who is just huge and how she's still hungry. That is just disturbing. And I also love how this movie is the right mix of horror and comedy. The comedy really does balance everything out, and I think it's well utilized here. The practical effects are great. I really like Nathan Fillion. And I also love how you got a story between a husband and a wife, and people don't believe they actually love each other. They just view her as a gold digger, but she proves them wrong time and time again. And yeah, I really love this movie. It's just... The type of movie I wish we got nowadays. And I, I do like how James Gunn tries to bring some elements of this movie into 
some of his work, like Peacemaker and The Suicide Squad, but man, I, I would, I know he's caught up with DC, I would just love it if the dude made a full-on horror movie again, because, yeah, that'd be great, but, yeah, whatever, but, my favorite James Gunn movie is Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. And not only is it my favorite James Gunn movie, it's also my favorite MCU movie. Now, the first time I watched it, I had some issues with it, but I still really liked it. But every time I rewatched it, I just love it more and more. It's a great evolution of these characters, and they get each get expanded upon in fascinating ways, and... The conflict with each other is so well written and so fully realized. I love how Peter and Gamal's relationship is mirrored by Peter's and Londu's. Londu loved Peter, but he never was open about it. Same with Gamora. So after Peter loses Londu, Gamora realizes that life is short and she talks to Peter about the unspoken spoken thing. I, I think it's a really beautiful moment at the end there, and Londu's death is one of the most emotional moments of the entire MCU, so all of that really works. I also love the visuals in this movie. It is just so bright and colorful and stunning to look at. I love the final battle. You really feel like the entire universe is at stake. I love how weird this movie can get. My favorite scene in the MCU is when Ego's forming himself again. And you've got the skeletons, and then the uh, tissue, and then the skin. And I love that scene so much. And Colt Russell is a really fantastic villain as Ego. You really get how manipulative he is, and just how egotistical. And I thought he really did great. I think the entire cast is once again fantastic. I love the soundtrack to this movie. It's not quite as good as the soundtrack for the first movie, but it's pretty damn close. I love the use of Mr. Blue and Lakeshore Drive and Southern Nights and um, uh, Wham Bam Shamalam. Is that what it's called? I think so. Anyways, that song and The Chain by Fleetwood Mac especially. Love that. And it's just a movie that fully delivers in every possible way. It's heartbreaking and just filled with emotion. It's filled with great character moments. The cast does fantastic. It's hilarious. Great soundtrack. Visually stunning. It just fully delivers in everything you want it to. And every time I watch it, I just love it a little bit more. Like, even the fact that the autopilot uh, spaceships are like a video game. That's such a weird choice, but I love that. Like, it's just so great. And yeah, th th this is a movie that um, I really love. It's uh, one of my favorite um, superhero movies ever. It's w honestly one of my favorite movies ever. One day when I do a full-length review, I'll go more in-depth, but... Yeah, it's great, and, um, yeah, that's why it's my favorite James Gunn movie, directed movie, but, um, yeah, what's your ranking of his filmography, though? Let me know in the comments down below, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, stay tuned for more videos soon, and Gavin, out.